incorporate Indigenous culture, Aboriginal culture, Aboriginal people, Indigenous people into the film and television making world. Um, and part of that process, part of that process that hasn't been complete is um, more feature films, more drama films made by Indigenous people. And whether they make them about themselves or about Asian Australians or Eskimos is neither here nor there. It's just the process of making. Um, I'm not interested in any way in kind of drawing a, a black white line in the sand and saying it's authentic because it was made by a black person and unauthentic because it was made by a white person. I think that that's you know, the worst sort of inverted racism. But at the same time, a process of engagement still has to happen. If you want to, you know, a lot happens by osmosis, a lot happens by being around people, a lot happens just by working with people, by understanding their thought process, their philosophy. You know, and indigenous people have a remarkably different philosophy on life to Europeans, absolutely. And they can't, we can learn it in books and we can learn it by experience. And I think by experience is, is the thing that we still have to do to get to a point where we can say we understand each other properly and respect each other enough to be able to tell each other stories. We had one Aboriginal member on the crew, the assistant, first assistant director, uh, second assistant director. But what's happened since then is, um, there's so many really good Aboriginal filmmakers who have come through the system. So that sort of film now ideally would be made by an Aboriginal crew, director. You know, I reckon they could make it really effectively. Mm -hmm. um, and that's happening more and more, where there's territory where white filmmakers used to, with, you know, with good reasons, um, good motivation, you know, positive motivation, make a film about that they thought something's wrong, something's been, you know, this, this community is not being treated well, or whatever, be disenfranchised, but from, they're still white fellas making it. Now what happens, it's not really their territory anymore. It's, it's because it's, it's more authentic coming from indigenous filmmakers. So that's a, quite a shift. And now the sort of films that get made by white, uh, or non-Aboriginal filmmakers tend to be something, maybe like um, Jindabyne, you know, where there's a, a small, like there's an important strand, but it's only a strand rather than that's indigenous, rather than the whole film content being indigenous. That would not, very rarely get, if ever, get made now. If the whole content of the film was indigenous, you, you wouldn't find a non-indigenous director. I don't think working on it. It would be politically wrong, and it would just be feel wrong to do it. When you start to uh, think about um, the different countries, they're, they're very similar. They've been colonised. They're all racist countries. And they all, um, their indigenous populations are basically at the bottom of the pile. Um, and our country's no exception. I mean, my view of it is sort of, uh, I'm not, a, I'm, a, I'm not a, on the bad end of it, you know, I'm, a, I'm at the top end where, um, you know, uh, my view is uh, middle class, um, guilt ridden view, um, whereas if you talk to some of the indigenous filmmakers, they have a very clear point of view. It's just really interesting. I did a workshop um, with uh, a group of indigenous filmmakers, writers, actors, directors, and all their stories um, were about coming home, um, leaving home, and having family taken away. And they were all, and this, this was, you know, it wasn't a conspiracy or anything, it's just a, a, a natural thing that I observed. And um, when you listen to some of their stories, they are so sad. And as a, as a country, we're not aware of, I mean, on a surface level, um, intellectually, certain people may be aware of the massacres and the things that have happened to Aboriginal people. Um, but we don't seem to um, empathise with, we empathise more about the Holocaust 
than we do um, about what's happened to the Aboriginal nation. And um, it, so, you know, because I'm an Aboriginal person and I don't have those, uh, I didn't grow up with those things. I grew up with, you know, on, the, on the periphery of that, of understanding that. Not, I didn't have a very clear understanding. And as I get older and become more interested, my perception is, is much clearer. But there, point of view is really interesting. I think the same issues are at play everywhere because it's all globalisation. But at the same time, um, the story that we're told is is a riff on um, a very, very Australian story, Burton Wills, really. I mean, basically, we, we, we retold one of the foundation myths of Australia, which is the story of Burton Wills, but we just recast it with people from, um, from different um, countries. And in doing so, kind of reflected the geopolitical realities of Australia for the last 30 years. But, you know, um, guys walking into the desert and dying is a very Australian thing to do. <laughs> but I think in the end, what we've tried to do is actually show Australia, which is very familiar to a lot of Australian audiences and a lot of film goers as well, because the landscape and Australian desert has become kind of a perennial character in a lot of Australian films. Um, but then show how different people and different cultures are experiencing it. Um, so it is, yes, the experience of people who come to Australia and trying to get people to imagine, the audience to imagine themselves as groups of people that generally they have classified as other. Um, and it's, apart from the very periphery, um, there really are no Austra white Australians in the film, except for the Don. one token Caucasian, Don. Um, so there, for most of the film, and but certainly our three key protagonists, um, the audience has to invest in them because they don't have the out of investing in you know the white Caucasian sidekick in that little trio. Um, so it's it's showing Australia through the eyes of people normally classified as other, but whom we hope by the end of the film you have invested in, on whose journey you have um, gone, um, and you know for whom you, if we're successful, um, have empathy. So it is intriguing in some ways because you're forced to grapple with an Australia which is both familiar in the way you see it, um, but um, alien in the way it's being experienced by the, the leading characters. I reckon like intriguing is like a really weak way to describe it. Because, <laughs> you know, it was like it was 